Right here on LA Talk Radio. What's up, everybody? I'm your host, Jared Zavostowski, and you're listening to and watching Modern Mail Radio. This is all the stuff your mama should have told you and the stuff your daddy never knew. That's right, Jared. That's right. <laughs> Look who's back. And joining me is Interrupting Cow Sarah. Moo. Hi, everybody. And uh, my co host, Leah Pelka. Hey, how are you? So, this, is, this should be a, a very, very exciting show. Two girls, one Jared. What are you going to do? Two girls, one Jared. Um, so actually what I want to know is, um, so today we're going to do kind of a special on, on girls and how they go about getting guys and how they tend to attract oh, or yeah, 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 yeah. So that's, that's what we're going to do today. Um, I got to give away all my secrets. Yeah, probably. Jared. Yeah. So that's how some girls do it. So let's start with you, Leah. Hey, what are your secrets? Don't have any. That's the good news. What would, so if we if we could give some advice to some females out there, what do women do in the, order to the, attract men? You need to be confident in who you are as a person and as a female. You need to figure out what path you're headed on, and you need to be confident in that path. And you need to, to find a passion, and you need to stand on your own two feet without him to begin with. And that always will attract a good man who is in the same path you're on. Mm-hmm. If you're not doing that, then, then you're not going to match up. Okay. What about you, Sarah? Oh, definitely self-alignment. I agree with that 100%. Um, and if you're the opposite route of self-alignment, then you're going to match up to somebody who is just face down, ass up, or back down, face up on the ground. It's alignment either way. It's aligned, it's aligned with whatever you're aligned with. Okay. So you guys don't have any like, like, like one, two, three. T- I you, mean, you want the specifics. It's, it's funny like, do because you mean like, if no, you're no. like how to pick someone up or is that what you're saying? Whenever, whenever I go on an interview, I get asked like the same stuff. So when I, when I did uh, my interview with ask women, which is uh, on playboy with the dating coach, uh, Marnie, and she was talking, she goes, you know, give me five tips. And I Hi, said, Marnie. I said, it I doesn't, like it doesn't matter how many tips, it, tips and tricks will never work. Right. Because it's really about the alignment. Um, and it's really, really about like, you can use anything if you've got a strong base. If you don't have a strong base, you can try everything and it won't work. No, I totally agree with you. So, and I'm coming to find that the same qualities that, and it's funny because I started coaching a lot. I've been, I've been coaching a lot more girls and I've noticed that it's, it's damn near the same thing. Like I, I teach what I teach guys is what I end up teaching girls anyway. So it's like, I'm coming to the conclusion now that if women just picked up some of those pickup books, they could totally just completely fuck the playing field. Well, I mean, there's only really one difference. Are we, I mean, from women and men, right? I mean, we just have different body parts. Other than that, I think women see on and uh, they see details. Yeah, I disagree a with bit. that a hundred thousand percent. We have a lot of the differences, men of and women. Of course, we do. What are some big differences? Of course, Leah? we do. I think. Well, I think huge differences are like men are geared towards more physical, and women are very emotional, and that's kind of the difference between the two. And it's like when you really strike a balance, and you get old enough to a understand how your body works then you can master how someone else's body works. Do you know what I mean? I think that that kind of is, is where you really start to understand a guy. Like if you can understand that most men are physical, then you can start to understand men better. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I feel like that's the difference between the two. Like I feel like we're more emotional. Like if you have to look at a, two huge big differences between the two. Depends on the guy. I mean, I guess there, there are he bitches in this world, right? There are a couple. Um, Plenty. But so you say that there, you don't think that the differences I are very big. I was actually just fucking around. I mean, of course, there are massive differences. Yeah. But yeah. I What's mean, the main difference that you see in your interaction with guys? Oh my gosh, which kind of guys? Which ones? I mean, where are we going with this? The, like, the, let's just go the guys with I'm like, attracted to, or the guys that. Uh, let's go with. Let's, let's do to both. Because the, there's, there's the a difference. The guys that you're attracted to and the guys who are not attracted. So let's go. There's, there's let's, definitely let's, a difference let's go through the two. between the guys that I'm attracted to versus the guys that are attracted to me versus whatever the third option would be. Um, the third option was a burp and it just happened. And Did, it's gone. Is that what it's happened? Gone now. It was yeah. just a, like a little bit of air. Just, it was just a little just bit of air. Um, yeah. So let's, let's, uh, you want me to extra- yeah, so extrapolate what is it, what, on that? Yeah. Extrapolate, please. Uh, the, difference, the, the difference between myself and the guys I'm attracted to. Yeah. Usually I am in a much better place with myself than the guys I'm attracted to are. That would definitely be the first and foremost things. It's opposites for me. Opposites. I'm attracted to opposites. Okay. So you like guys that are fucked up. 
uh, wait a second. <laughs> no, I actually like guys that are very put together. I'm the one that's fucked up. But thank oh, you for okay. the compliment, okay. Jared. That's totally, so nice of totally you. Totally mix that around. Okay, so um, I'm, I'm just actually kidding again. I, I mean, it, it is funny because when we talk about this, we we tend to talk about feminine femininity, and masculinity as like these innate archetypes, as like this this is a man and that's a woman, and men function like this and women function like that. And I'm right. be, I'm I'm coming to understand and see that, you know. A lot of men have a have different a different range of femininity within them and a different range of you know all all the different qualities and I've seen women that are like incredibly masculine and you're just like stop yeah, playing you're softball like, woman you're so mannish like like what's what's that about yeah so um you know and and that that goes to that that's I mean that that's kind of why we ended up doing everything here at Modern Male was because I was like okay so then what it, what makes a man a man what what makes you know we come to that societal construct that a man is dependent on the culture that he lives in but a male like so what is innately male and um, why are, we're really talking about this right now yeah. these are some large concepts yeah 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 well they've been themes that have we've kind of um skirted through throughout the entire show yes. but i'm 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 much much more curious uh about the female side of dating advice so i, I and i want you guys so i want you guys to really think about it and i want you to, to kind of give me something um something that you do that you don't think anybody else does to get a guy or to uh maybe maybe don't feel like you need to get a guy i can see uh i can see leo over there just like frowning like i don't need man like, i don't need a man bitch i uh, mean no i mean it's one of those things where i feel like it, i feel like honestly again it starts like i notice when when okay men have never have never like been a problem don't get me wrong but when i really figured out what i wanted to do started finding my passion and where I wanted to be in life and becoming mm -hmm. really involved in like what I really believed in and, and finding, you know, my, my solid ground and what I wanted to do. I started attracting a whole bunch of a different quality of men that really changed the, the way I dated yeah. almost immediately. Cause it's when like, when did you find that out? Probably like in my mid twenties, but like most definitely in the past year, I really, cause I divorced. So mm -hmm. that was a big deal for me getting, you know, cause you have yeah. to separate yourself from a person when you're married, you really do. And when you become your own person, this past year has been like a, a huge year for me, just growing into what I want to do. And then, and then having all these opportunities that just don't stop rolling in. And it's been amazing. It's been such a blessing. I mean, it, and it just, I feel like when that happens, you know, it's just like, it, it's just that, that nod that you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. You know what I mean? And then like, I feel like I'm meeting all these great people along the way too. It's just been, it's been unreal. I mean, and, and I feel like, I feel like the men that I'm attracting now are on that same path. And yeah. so it's really cool to see, uh, I, I know people who are musicians, people who are artists, people who are, um, the ambitious male. Yeah, I mean, like, even like you, like, you've written a book. Like, I, I, I've i become friends with you over this, the course of this year. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, even, like, it's just, it's not it's not who I'm just dating to. It's a different quality of men are talking to me. You know what I mean? Because they're seeing that, like, because you saw me through what I was doing with my art, sort of, in a way. <laughs> like, I just caught you on Instagram. Sure. That's all. Sure. Um, and, and you, Sarah, like, I mean, does, does ambition play a part in how you're attracted to a guy? You've always kind of been around very ambitious guys since... Uh, since yeah, the beginning of time what, what breaks that though ambition's great and everything but if if the people aren't happy that that's what's the deal breaker for me yeah it has nothing to do with anything else because happiness is where it starts so i mean i could be attracted to somebody who's good looking who's successful you know you just cross it off the checklist but if happiness isn't there it's just done yeah and you, have, nowhere to go. you have quite a few you know just really like, I, like I've, I've said it before on, on multiple shows but you have a, a collection of dudes around you that are very, very. I attract a lot of looking, the qualities. Uh, entrepreneurial. A lot of the great qualities, but like, I don't seem to attract. I'm definitely not the only one. <laughs> Wait, did I, did I attract you, Jared? I'm just kidding. No. The happiness thing, though, that's that's huge. Cause, yeah. Because people will act like they're okay, like everything's good, yeah. they're fine. True. But like you can tell when somebody's not really okay. Yeah. And it's pretty transparent. Well, happy people. So, are you attracted to happiness? Yeah, but I think that, like, uh, again, like, I think that the best advice I can give a female is being herself, like, dressing within, you know, her happiness or whatever else. I feel like when you have your own inner happiness, you attract, it's like that vibe you give off. You you find happy people and they come to you. I feel like you have less chances of running into negative people when you, do you know what I mean? So it's like happiness is important to me, but I want that consistent happiness and the ability to kind of ebb and flow because 
I know that sometimes like things happen Mm -hmm. and if something happens and you're not happy, make sure that you can be comfortable within yourself. The only reason I say that is because I went through a marriage where a guy couldn't, he really couldn't deal with the waves that were happening too. Like I met him and he was happy and then shit happened and he wasn't and he didn't know how to deal with it. And I didn't know that that was the case. You know what I mean? So you need someone who's like stable as well. Stability within that happiness is a, you know what I mean? Is a huge construct. Yeah. No, that's a very, very hard thing to deal with. Um, and so th- do you think that uh, the trials and tribulations are what caused the relationship to end? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, it's one of those things where it's like you become ride or die and you stay for so long and then you just look stupid. You know what I mean? And I think that that kind of if you stay with someone for so long and they can consi- consistently mess up and you can't save them, you have to save yourself. Yeah. Especially if you have kids, you know what I mean? You have to you have to step away from something, even if you love it or you care about it. And in dating now, and I think having kids has really changed me because it's like I'll see someone start messing up and I'll be like, I don't care how hot you are. Bye. Like, you know what I mean? I have kids. And if you're not going to be a good role model and you're not going to be a good person, and you're not going to be good to be around them. I don't I don't care. I yeah. don't care. I won't have you around like I won't put myself around it. And so I think that that that, too, has changed the way that I've dated because I put up with a lot less now. Yeah, a lot less. We were we were talking about this earlier. When the plane's going down, whose masks do you put on first? You put your own mask on. Mm-hmm. So I mean, that just generally applies to what you were even saying. Um, mm-hmm. You have to handle yourself first, and then you can be able Absolutely. to handle somebody mm-hmm. else's stuff. That's good. It's all good stuff. So no I don't ju- ever want to be in a plane, however, that's going down where I have to put my mask on, just so no. you know. No, just no, so that's you terrifying. Yeah. Oh, no, I don't. I don't like it. to watch movies like that. I don't. I don't like they that freak either. me out. Yes. Like that or Jaws, like in, in like ocean, ocean or air. Uh, uh-uh, I'm nope, out. Forget yeah. it. I'm, I'm out. Done. Well, it's really interesting because like I've I've met uh, I know a, a a ton of girls who are you know, they're they're beautiful. They've got things going for them. And they tend to thank be you, in re- relationships. <laughs> thank you, Jared. I wasn't talking about you guys. Uh, <laughs> of course not, but thank you. Anyway. Uh, they, they tend to. He was talking about himself. Well, that's all the people that need help. Some good for <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, I, I met women that are com- the complete opposite where they're always, they're always kind of with a guy that needs fixing. They're always with the kind of guy that needs. No, I got a problem with that. Um, I really do. Like, I think that that's something like that's probably my biggest flaw is. I, is well, it's called codependency. It's, there's a big word for it. Mm. I don't think it's codependency. I don't think I need that. I think it's just one of those things where it's like I end up finding people and it's like maybe they're good at putting on like the representative and then you find out and then you stay with them because you you fell in love with the representative or maybe, you know what I mean? Like that's probably the problem is it's like you fall in love with the wrong parts of them and they're not really 100% honest. That I feel like so it's fa- like falling in love with a fixer upper house. Absolutely. Like these guys are real estate. And some of them are money pits. And you can see, <laughs> yeah. You can see the increased value or you could see, you know, where it's yeah. going to drag you under and you're like, damn it, the sink is broken in every single room that has a I'm sink. I'm Tom Hanks literally hanging from a rug in my, in my uh, yeah. living room. No, no, the movie. Never mind. Forget yeah. Money well, pit. What? Money Some pit. people oh, though okay. are in love with that kind of situation because they can see themselves yeah. having a journey, increasing the value, mm-hmm. and that applies to. I'm not in love with the too. situation. That's that part's codependency. I just seem to find the people who need fixer up, and I'm like, what? Y'all presented. I swear to God, when I closed on this house, y'all told me everything was intact. <laughs> what yeah. do you mean? That emotional yeah. escrow was not waning. Yeah, at that point. I'm it was so sorry. I was way wrong. Well, what it is is it provides validation for the other per- person. I think in a lot of respects. Uh, you know, being with somebody that constantly needs work or whatever. The only time I need validation is when I'm parking. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm Well, obviously, this isn't for you guys. That's why I'm asking you guys no, for it, your yeah, dating advice. For everybody. Um, but yeah, uh, I, I think that, that there's only one thing I can tell you with dating advice. If you're a good you, you're going to get, and it's like, it's finding who you are as a person. When you are on the inside, a good female, you're going to radiate that to the rest of the world. Like if you're wearing, if you're wearing what Kim Kardashian is wearing because that's what's popular, you're never going to win. You need to figure out what's popular for you and what works for you and what's comfortable for you. You got to work your own style into everything because when you're comfortable and you're most comfortable, you're most you're you're giving out the best vibes and you're getting the best yeah. vibes back. Do you know what I mean? Like I think but that's I mean, the best dating. You bring advice. up an interesting point with the Kim Kim K thing. I mean, Ugh. she's definitely completely comfortable being her. Uh, is maybe she? and maybe that is the best version of her that is available to her, God uh, her. which is sad. But right. you know, whatever. Um, and then, you know, I think I th- and I, I've talked about this several times, but I think w- the reason why people follow other people like that is they, they feel like because that person is there, they go, oh, that well, that's obtainable for me because that person doesn't really have any talents or qualities that are special. Right. We um, watched her become like a, this princess Cinderella story where she was, you know, in a porn and then all of a sudden, but above, you know, like she's, yeah, girl. she's like <laughs> now Kanye's wife and she's like a princess of America and everyone treats her like royalty. It's weird, but it's happened. Yeah. What do you think about it? Uh, I mean, good for <laughs> her. I'm just like Kim Kardashian. We're talking about her again. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, think, I don't t- think I've ever talked about her. 
on the show, but yeah, I'm probably like, go not. Kim. We were probably too busy drinking on all, all of our shows. Possibly. There was <laughs> don't have that, that problem. Yeah. So I brought there, it up a couple times. That was the whole dip during the summer. Uh, but those were some funny shows. It was we hilarious. Had a lot of and mm-hmm. whatever makes you feel good, go with that. Yeah. That's my That's called hedonism thing. and that's not a good idea. That's how we get AIDS and that's how we get dependency and that's how we get all yeah, kinds well, of things. Yeah, well that's if sex Rel- makes you feel relax good with random hedonism. people. Yeah, relax but I mean hedonism. it doesn't for me. Actually, um I'm I'm uh, it's funny when it comes to religious ideologies. Uh hedonism's not that bad. Uh it, yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry. I had to school you a little bit there, Leah. Uh, but I don't, um, feel, I don't feel educated any by you just now. I don't feel like any education was just dropped on me with hedonism. Yeah. Um. When it comes down to it, like living by a moral code, those those are just all social cohesion tools. Um. In order to sm- ensure that our our a society no, I'm not survives. saying you have to go through the social constructs what man has set up. I think you should have your own internal moral compass and be able to follow it, though. You can set up your own within yourself, and you should be able to follow within those parameters, and that should fall inside of or outside of hedonism still. doesn't mean you have to follow the code that everyone has set up for you. Like, for instance, I have a, um, I had an ex-girlfriend, amazing human, just magnetically attracted whatever she wants. And I was like, oh, I was like, that's kind of cute to see you light up like that when you talk about yeah, her. Yeah, she, she was uh, Is an that like your one person. love? Could be. Oh, um, that's cute. Jerry got all cute for the first time but, talking about a le- an ex. Um, Whoever you are, you did something. Anyway. Uh, yeah, but it was funny because her one rule was if it feels good, do it. And I was like. I couldn't understand that because I'm a very like, ma. it's got a, it's a powerful message. It has to be black or white. And I have to analyze like the constructs of everything in order to like make a decision. If I make a decision, it's because I've literally thought about the problem and then the solution and then the cause and effect and all this stuff. And I get so like tanked up in that until I finally like, and she was just like, it's a no. super She's simple, like, but power, the most powerful thing you can say. It feels good, do it. And the do. craziest thing was that she, uh, she got everything she fucking wanted. Like, I mean, anything she would literally she yeah. would tell me about like the shit that she'd pulled into her life and like kind of how she had done it. And it was like, I mean, crazy jobs, cars, everything, not mm-hmm. not doing it the way that normal girls do it, where they're like, oh, if it feels good, do it. <laughs> oh, you <laughs> so mean they, like the, the slutty up, part yeah, of it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where, where girls are like, you know, kind of fucking their way to the top. Yeah, uh, she gotcha. wasn't doing that. She was just she just had like a very, very strong energy. Her emotional scale. And so she, then she wasn't hedonistic, though. So then she was still following within certain parameters. But she was saying, if it's if it's good for you, if it feels good, if it's not, if it's going to benefit other people, do it. Right. So there's more than just being hedonistic, right? Well, I mean, more I would, than just saying yes to whatever, right? He, like down for an orgy, just, yes. Like, well, I mean, that's not too far off when it comes down to it. I don't think she yikes. found anything wrong with that, whether or not she would do it or not. <laughs> but it's just it's and then and then it goes into that. It's like you know you can make choices for yourself, but again, like is it wrong? Is it right? I, you, you know, you can't really say. Um, and I think that in, unless it hurts somebody, it's not really wrong. Like there's nothing you can say is wrong. Yeah, unless but now you just human. put in a moral code saying if it hurts someone, so now it's no longer heathen. Yeah. Right. I don't know. Uh, um, <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Chicken and egg. I'll, I'll, chicken. I'll, I'll do my studying uh, and I'll come back to you next show with like the, he, the dictionary of hedonism. <laughs> I feel like he wrote it. I feel like that would be like Jared's book. That is your book. No, I actually I grew up I grew up with really really strong moral compass, and it took years to kind of like analyze that and actually shake that because. I would grow up in a very Christian society and I grew up and then I went e- even more extreme into Christianity when I was in my teens. You so tell me about that, the evangelical a, stuff. A pastor and I became a, just such a judgmental prick that it was like, I mean, it was, it was the worst thing that could have ever happened to me because I was, I was so, um, like I used that moral compass to tell everyone they were wrong. And I was right. And you know, this is, and I mean, there's a really, really interesting line. Do of, you feel like uh, it was like the same thing? Like with not like, okay, I'm going to compare really quick to an extreme comparison, but I'm just asking, cause it just reminded me of it. Cause it's in, in the news recently, but like the Orlando shooter, how he felt like they may have thought he may have been gay and he was felt really repressed. So he went into this whole like cover up of, I'm going to go and do it for no. Islam. Do you know, do no. you feel like you went, <laughs> no, no. Do you feel like you went so extreme to like, to tell everyone they were wrong and live a different life? lifestyle based on who you truly were on the inside is what i'm asking no no no, not at all i I followed a very very simple logic and the logic was this if you believe in god Mm -hmm. and god exists to the best of your knowledge then if god said hey i have this book that i want you guys to read and live your life by and the purpose of your life is to get to know me through this book then you have absolutely no choice but to devote your life to god um and, and that it was just so strange to me that you see people and like, oh, I'm Christian, you know, but I don't go right. to church enough or whatever. And it's like, so you believe that there's this thing up there that put you here for a reason 
and then gave you an instruction manual and you don't fucking read that thing every day. You don't, that, that is your life purpose is to yeah. get to know that because of this. And it's like, like that concept is just so foreign. People are like, yeah, but you know, I don't, and, and they just let their pastors kind of interpret it, or they let themselves interpret. And I'm like, no, no, no. If that exists, you don't get to interpret. You don't get to you don't get to make shit up. You don't get to interpret. Yeah, there's no in between the lines. Yeah, there's no there's no. This fucking, isn't choose your own adventure. Yeah, okay. it's not choose your this own adventure. Not, there are no rules that you're it's, making up here. If you believe that there is a God, then you have no choice but to devote your life to that God. So, and I and and that so that was my compelling argument. And my and a lot of people, I mean, I'm sure the people watching this right now that are going to get really uncomfortable and be like, ah, 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 but it's get, fuck, get it's fucking true. Here it comes. And. I, I can I can I, I've I've decimated people in this argument. I've decimated pastors. I was doing this when I was like a he teenager. will decimate you in the comments. <laughs> he will definitely decimate your um, Facebook thread. But but you know this was and I was 15 years old and I was I was beating the the dog shit out of uh, people that knew the Bible back to front side to side on this argument. Um, and then the other thing is is you don't get to interpret. You let the Bible interpret itself, which is a very very simple concept. God said this. So you read this, oh boy. and then you fucking make this happen. It's like like you don't get to go. Oh, I like well, that we, we threw the f we, word in with all of that. Yeah. That was all this evil, evil idea, or whatever it was. There yeah. You go. In case we weren't uncomfortable before, here we <laughs> so, are now. So that, and, you know, that whole thing. So yeah, that or and we, I think we're, we're completely off subject here. But, but you can I tell have a I'm, question though. Like, did you? Were you? Did you? Because you grew up in California. Were you Christian as well at all? Ever at one point? Yeah. Episcopal Me schooling. Either. Nothing. I mean, a Catholic high school for a minute, but I went to so many different schools. Yeah, I, I had a problem with a guy who was like his his presence was divine by his absence. Like, I don't. What do you mean? You're not ever here, God, but you like now. I have to have you all present in my life. Yeah, like nah. Yeah, I'm see, tired. Uh, yeah. but the thing about religion is a lot of people are kind of raised into it and brainwashed. Yeah, hey, I grew up in Alabama. You, you can't know. tell me nobody being raised in no religion. Like, <laughs> yeah, what you mean? Yeah. <laughs> like, you go to the gas station. They're like, Amen. You can pay three dollars for that. You yeah, yeah, I mean? yeah. Like, um, so back to dating advice. Back to it. Would you guys ever date somebody that was like super religious? I did. Oh, so okay. I was actually going to go to that, you know, jump in there and be Yikes. like, well, you know, that one guy, that one ex, that that was like the deal breaker for him was that I wasn't. I wasn't Catholic. I wasn't going to go there. Okay. Yeah. So, you yeah, tell. I would date. I would date. I mean, I just did. Like, I spent the most of my, like, serious years of dating anybody with this guy. Yeah. And it was fine. But, I mean, I just, there comes a time when you can't, there's, like, that one thing, and it was religion. Yeah. Did I, ever, I, never, I probably never told either of you guys about this. Um, the time I almost uh, got got forced into converting to uh, Scientology. Oh, Wow. <laughs> Wow. I feel like he ends up in some really weird shit. Like I, I have, always I have a Scientology weird. thing too, actually. So. I never have had a Scientology. You know how y'all have things that I don't have? This goes it, back it, to that. It's a California. Yeah. It was no, this in California. not a California this thing. Yeah. This is a yeah. y'all thing. So, say. so there was this Toastmasters group at the Scientology Center when I decided I oh, wanted so to be. So you were at the Scientology Center yeah, and somehow you are surprised you were actually almost committed. How did you get there? Uh, what well, are you doing there? Well, no, no. So Toastmasters is an organization that they basically it's it's for people that struggle with stage fright and stuff. But what it does is they have chapters all over this guy over here stage break. and they let you but they let you practice public speaking yes so that's what i was using for it obviously i don't have stage fright but it was like hey i can practice i can work on speaking like it's like a an acting class for speakers but it's yeah. free and a lot of people go in there because they have issues yep. but a few people want to be motivational speakers or whatever um, so but where's the location uh it's well it was the only one that was in hollywood so i lived right down the street from you know what's the location there it was at it was they held it in the Scientology theater or they whatever. They did. Well, so that's, that's your red flag. <laughs> there it yeah. is. For me, I'd be like, and we're done here. You well, I didn't think Toastmasters anything of it. Toastmasters is a huge thing. Yeah, and, that's and they, very they rent space renowned. everywhere. So Toastmasters. But I didn't know it was associated with Scientology. No, it's not. It's not. Um, so they, they, and it's not, it should never be. I wouldn't so care if they was, had twerking at yeah. the Kojic convention. If I read the Kojic convention, I wouldn't be twerking at it. Okay. Well, they have, <laughs> like, they have Toastmasters at, at tons of different churches. Like they have, to, they have Toastmasters at Christian churches, at Catholic churches. They have, they have Toastmasters in all sorts. And they're not, they're not. They're not normally affiliated with those things. Like only this time I've, they were. <laughs> I've been to I've been to a Toastmasters at a Denny's before, right. which was really. So awesome. I'm down with that. Yeah. Like, Denny's, don't, where's that location? Denny's Sign must have been full one. that night. I was actually right? yeah. it wasn't Denny's. It was Dupar's, but there is oh, one. Oh, Dupar's at, at is great. Denny's it's like the, I feel like the next location is like going to be like a, an AA meeting or something. Yeah. <laughs> like, there's yeah. like nefarious yeah. people it's, at these meetings. It's like so it was really weird. So I was like, they showed up and they were like, obviously like they loved. They were like, yeah, yeah, you sh we want we want you here because they compete. All the Toastmasters compete for like a national competitions. They were like, yeah, yeah gonna win next year right 
and they're like you you just have to take like one of the fucking classes here and i was like what and they were like you have to take like one of the scientology just classes. the one that says you're going to load that mothership when we're done with you and you're clear and i was like i was like you a what are you talking about we get you on the tone scale <laughs> see i'd be like so, oh hell no <laughs> finally i was like i was like i really no. liked the group i didn't know and they they were like they were like we're not scientologists like we don't care but you you have to take or a class are you? <laughs> So no, I, f I find this out. So I end up going up into the, the actual center. And I'm like, fine, I'll fucking take a class. Like, whatever. And this chick literally hands me a piece of paper. It's a legal document. And she's like, she's getting kind of ticked off because I'm really taking my time Sign reading it. Sign your life away to the mothership, And I Jared. looked back at her and I said, this says that I have to convert to Scientology, mm. that I'm now a registered Scientologist. And how many thousands and of What does that even mean, a registered Scientologist? Yeah. That sounds means, like a pedophile. Yeah, like a registered... <laughs> Like I'm you're a, a registered religious offender. First of all, do y'all even have muffins here? Like that's my first question. I'm like, I want no record of any nope. affiliation with you people ever. And she was like, Ugh. well, if you don't sign this, you can't take the class. And I'm like, like, I'm good with that. I was like, yeah. So, um, and she, she got mad. Like I, it got it, the, the, the engagement got very, very hostile. I was like, look, I'll just pay you. I'll take the fucking class, but I'm not signing that paper. And she was like, well, if you don't sign the paper, you can't take the class. And, da, da, da. and I said, this paper literally says that I've converted to Scientology. And that I believe at the end of this road that there is a religion. And I'm telling you to your just face. Just sign it, that Jared. You're like, I'm not going anywhere. No. I like, would have just good. slid that back and been like, I did. Bia! I did. Like, uh, yeah. Bia. Yeah. You know me. I would have been <laughs> like, I already signed it. It's fine. They're not going to do anything. What are they going to do? Hold you accountable to this shit when I die? Like, what are you going to do? Well, see, that's the thing. Scientology has a very, very long history of like roping people in and fucking with them. So like they've done the same thing with Tom Cruise and John Travolta. Oh, with like their records and stuff. Didn't they say that they would yeah, take their records? Yeah, so what they do is they like, they have like, I saw the manipulation process at, at for what was happening. I went to this th this group that I really liked that I wanted to be a part of and then they made me go here Didn't and then Leah I can't Remini get there. did Leah write a book about the exposure of that? Like a couple of celebrities yeah, there was exposed. Yeah, there was a documentary that came out. Basically, they put you through this thing where they, they make you kind of like unburden yourself so you have to like tell them your deepest, darkest secrets and when it came to Tom Cruise and John Travolta, they like they basically told him like if you ever leave we're gonna fucking tell everybody what you said in this this yeah. interview and that's why yeah then that's why both of them well don't we already all know what their what their deepest darkest secrets are like we know y'all are gay go ahead it's fine like we I, get it from what i've heard it's <laughs> we worse get it. we know there's hamsters or yeah yeah like gerbils, like on the on the gerbil stuff. level we know of. there's there's something like i that. don't know i don't know uh i can't say for sure but you according know according to the filthy gossip that is they're well, okay, so we course. know about your gerbil use, sir. Yeah. <laughs> just might yeah. as well go ahead and come on out the church and go ahead and live the rest of your life. Like, yeah. just relax. We'll we'll accept you Gives again. Gives Jack Reacher a whole new spin. Yeah, the Reacher portion. So least. I don't know how we got Something on this, like but uh, yeah. So that's that's my Scientology story, guys. Are you Yikes. excited? As long as you're not on that mothership. I don't have I don't have any Scientology stories or know anything about a mothership. I'm too Native American for that shit. Well, I, I have a I'm just trying to die. One. I remember y'all forget. I'm just trying to die. Yeah, okay, so go for it. So back to the guy that I was religiously dating, the guy that was very religious. I uh, hurt myself when he was out of town on a work trip one time. I, like, broke my nose. And our neighbor was a Scientologist. How and did you break your nose? Literally, I was using a, a physical therapy band, like a snap band. And it snapped me in the face like a boomerang. What a pain! You mean yeah, like you mean like? Oh, it was it. it was great. You mean what like that pain. one time when we were shooting that skit? Yep. <laughs> yep. Yep. Exactly like that. That one time, except I was doing it to myself and just snapped it in my face. Yeah. So the neighbor heard me screaming because of course I snapped myself in the face. I broke my nose. Comes over and he's like, "Oh, I know what we're gonna do. We're gonna perform a contact assist." What the fuck? Yeah, some Scientologist shit. What? Right. We're gonna need to revisit the exact moment where the band hit your nose in the exact place. I'm in shock. I'm bleeding. Yeah. I'm screaming. I'm sorry. Wait, you called 911. This is the shit that they give you. Oh, I didn't call 911. I was screaming. The neighbor just showed up. I mean, he was yeah. like, right oh. next to me. So that was before I had to. I was like, I don't need your drama. Yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, I, so was, wait, I was in shock. This was the first. Did, like, did the two contact assist happened. work? Fuck no, it did not okay. work. What kind of question is this? I want you bleeding out. What my does nose that even mean? I, don't I know. feel like he why? was like, he was like, ah, child, um, he was like, you know, the whole thing. Be healed, huh? Yeah, it was basically like he was gonna touch my nose with the band. See, right y'all think I'm hit. crazy? Yeah, this mm. was some crazy shit. Yeah, I had a friend do <laughs> it that. It didn't work. It didn't work. It didn't work. I broke my nose once, and a friend of mine was like. Like they told me that they break y'all's noses so easily. Well, I got jumped uh, at a club f that one, but it's um, that mouth. I bet. Watch. It's yeah. That mouth. Yeah. It's that mouth. <laughs> yeah. I feel, I feel, whoever did it, I feel you. Mm. Well, uh, I offered to help the DJ with his equipment while he was like walking away, and um, did you also offer to kick someone's ass on the way out of that? He he like he like dropped his shit, and I guess I was like, hey bro, you need a hand, and I guess he thought I was gay and hitting on him, oh. so he wasn't having that, and. Um, 
Yeah. Not uh, that, not that hand from and there. not that part. Well, what, so anyways, um, I, when I get back to the hospital, my, I was like, they, they told me that they weren't going to set my nose. And I mean, I got, I, I got, what do you mean you're not going to set my nose? Yeah. It's like <laughs> yeah, over here. Cool. <laughs> and I was like, wait, how long do, till you set it? And they're like, it's going to take about a week. And I was like, like, what the fuck? Like, what do you have going on in this ER? This is going to take a week to set my yeah. nose. Well, they say, How do you not have an yeah. extra hand? They're like, like oh, we don't set in. noses. Yeah. You got to go to the ENT. So, what, I have to YouTube tutorial this? Like, yeah. <laughs> so, my buddy sitting next to me, and he's like, dude, I, I've broken my nose four times. He's like, he's like, I could set that for you. And I was like. See, you're hanging out with people that break their noses. And I don't, I'm, I'm you like, need to get away I'm from like, these kind of people. <laughs> well, one of the times, I, I'm the one that actually broke it. So, uh. <laughs> What is wrong with them? We, like, we, we I've used to never box. had this happen. Anyway, what? No. so he's like, he's like, he's like, put your hand like this. And I was like, 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 like this. And he goes, bam, and just snaps it. And it fucking goes right back uh, into place. Do I not was, try this at home. I was really, really impressed. <laughs> yes, this is not a cure or anything of that nature. Oh you should gosh. definitely yeah. not try that at home. Just horror. Yeah. But um, yeah, it was, a, it was an interesting experience. Um, I, mean, I, could see me, better. Like, I could see me at the hospital just like hanging out and watching that and being so tired and just being like so fed up with like the way both of y'all were acting and him popping it back in me and be like, bro, why did you just do that? That's so gross and just vomiting everywhere. I, I was, was like, like really no. happy. But, uh, you know, the worst thing about that whole experience was <laughs> having a doctor put a needle up my nose and watching it go up there. And it was like this long oh to put anesthesia. So like he had to numb it because he had to rebreak it. <laughs> So like I watched this needle just okay, and then feeling anymore. it go in there because there was like some initial anesthesia, but you know how you feel like um a needle go in your mouth like in your jaw a little Never bit had that happen. and that sucks and like I've I've had teeth you know like I I've, oh yeah like when you're yeah yeah and that, but that feeling of like having a needle go in, yeah. It's like a thousand times worse when it goes up your nose. <laughs> like, oh I've never experienced anything so heinous in my life. Yeah, that's pretty bad. Um, yeah, but I don't know what the what the fuck this has to do with dating right now. Well, um, I mean, the accidents can happen. Are, these are not good dating stories to tell, that's for sure. Yeah. We can relate it back. Actually, you know, when it comes down to it. Um, Reminds me of Ear Bleed Eric, the guy I went on the date with that just started bleeding from his ear. Just, just I like story randomly that one time. That, yeah. It was, yeah, it was very random. Well, he was scratching and then it happened. These fools got some stories, yeah. y'all. I'm yeah. here to tell you some campfire shit right yeah, here. Yeah, but you were out the game for how many years? Ten. Yeah. Happily, happily, if this was the shit that was going on, like, what do you mean? Like, no, nah, like, I listen, but see, I'm kind of the kind of person, too, where I put up with my ex-husband, but now, nothing. <laughs> do one thing. Yeah. yeah one one violation and i'll knock it all off and be like whoop you done. do you have like a checklist like do you hand somebody a violations list do they know no, what the no, violations no. are no i just like it's look like i get parole officer no. dating like <laughs> yeah pretty much at this at this juncture of my life i ain't wasting any more time absolutely yes so here's what i here's what i need and if you can't fit into my life i'm not forcing but you, you don't really tell, tell them exactly what so no i just call it off you should make a checklist there should well, be a checklist yeah that that was called be being grown it's now, called a boyfriend application yeah. okay it's and called look grow up it's called being adult it's called have your shit together it's real simple guys like mm -hmm. it's not very hard like i i firmly believe that boyfriend applications are, should be a thing really like what do you think what would be what would be a question on your boyfriend application or yeah. what do you think what, what would be your top two questions on the boyfriend application and go yeah, no, you guys, because I don't. Uh, mine so, would be a girlfriend application. Well, yeah, same Z's, but like I just think that you should be able to contribute two questions for the boyfriend application. How about that? Uh, to, yeah, you, yeah. You just you have to can give your advice because you're a male dating coach. You have to give advice. Um, I got my way. All right, so I mean, the questions that I would ask her like would be very very complex, but I. I the, the fundamental things that n like nine times out of ten ruin a relationship are generally when when. Are you ca are you capable of having a fight with somebody uh, and then actually getting over it, or are are scars going to linger and is resentment going to form? Because I, I, I give you my number one. Okay. What do you like about yourself the best? Okay. So that's I start with one. a positive. I start with what is the best thing you can tell me about yourself? Because a lot of people are like, what am I going to not like about you? Like, what's the deal breaker? Like, what is yeah. If you throw the negative out there, you're going to get the negative. So start with positive. What's the best thing? What's the best thing I'm going to learn from you? What's okay, so that's that's your first one? Best thing that's ever happened to you And then what's life? your second one? What do you want in life? Like, what makes you happy? Okay. Yeah. And then you? It's so general, but yeah. I know, right? I'm like, that's not that's not good enough for me. Okay, okay. so what's number one? Well, then come on. For me, I would rather do something that was like a psychological profile. I'd rather do the box theory. I'd rather do the box theory. We've talked about this before. You and I have off camera. We talked about the box theory before. What are you talking about? The what? What? So like, a box? I would, no, no, no. Like if if so, like if you're talking to someone, you just ask them to answer their question, just open only the first time. I'm gonna give it to her since I've never done it with you. I've already done it with you. I'm gonna give her the questions. Just answer. Oh, clo the close your eyes and picture a box thing. No, would you just stop now? Like, 
like I'll just do it for you. But it's like it's real simple though. All remember right. you'll remember it. So just answer the questions, open honestly, like whatever comes to your mind first. So imagine yourself in a room and you see a box. Where is the box in the room? In front of me. Okay. Uh, how big is the box? Uh like a box, like a like a package box? Describe it to me. What color is it? Open or closed? Oh my gosh, I just went through a full day of work today, so it's exactly what I'm looking at every day of my life. They're just nice and big and I can carry it and what you know, color is it? It's a box color. It's like brown. It's a box. It's, it's a box, box color. It's a box. <laughs> all right. So there's an You're talking to somebody who packs boxes every day, all day. I love boxes. <laughs> there I she do. Goes. There I she know goes. all sizes. I go to Box City actually. There you go. A couple times a month. There it is. Box City's amazing. So there's an animal sponsor. in the room. Oh yeah. What what's the animal? Jeez, it's a cat. I love cats. What color is it? Oh, it looks like Mahita. It's black and white. Nice. She's uh, so cute. Uh, how close is it to uh, the box? She's jumping up on that fucking box right now. She's saying she. Yeah, it's a she. Um, so there's a ladder in the room. Where's the ladder? Uh, right next to the box and the cat. All right. And how steep is it? How steep is it? It's a normal size ladder. Like if where if it were, is it against a wall or is it? Um. No, oh, it's like right next to right next to them. So they're all together. Yeah. All right. Cool. So the way that you work that out is like the box represents the person, the animal represents what they like, what they want a life relationship wise, and then the ladder lesbian represents cougar right there was what the that happened because that was like a female cat. Well, in then a box. maybe it could be like a friendship. You may want like a really good girlfriend, but then yeah. like two, um, really the good. ladder well, represents work. So like you go through and yeah. you kind of analyze it that way. This so like is, uh, it's not for dating necessarily with her and I, but that's how you do the box theory. That's yeah. how those questions work. This is very very old uh and, and this is something that i, I used it's funny because i used to do this to people uh when i was in religions like fucking a decade ago um but i, I found it to be off in certain areas um it, so it's not always My like 100 percent because what you have to do is you have to get somebody to trust you and then to completely go go like completely blank out and then go to the first thing that comes to their mind and kind of have this like subconscious experience and then they also have to know that it is a personality test um, and I feel like that that gives the results a little bit better of a because then they're more open to actually like taking it seriously as opposed to randomly shouting out things like like oh it's a cardboard box because that's all that's, yeah, that's yeah. how I spent my entire day today and every day actually I really do like doing my boxing every yeah day, so it's kind of nice it's all me. about that box I, like I still go with the box theory I still go with it I still go with it like as one of my first set of okay, questions okay so then what's your second one my second one um where do you see yourself in five years because you can always tell a lot about a man if they have a goal and a plan. Mm. And if they know where they want to go, then they know where they've been. So I feel like that answers a bunch of questions in one for me. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Like they, they, they've they learned for their past. They know where they want to go. They have a, a clear set. If they, they're like, oh, I don't know. Then it's like, that. yeah, it's all right. You know yeah. what I mean? Like that's not good for me. Yeah. I think, and I think that that's a deal breaker for a lot of women. Um, girls, women, uh, I'd say more women than girls. Female subjects. Female yeah, no, no, but it's not, it's not initially yeah. a female Running thing around. because younger women don't seem to care about it as much. But as women get older, every woman wants a man with a direction. Where are you going? Well, what on. are you doing? When we're younger, we do care about it. We just care about it in a different way. What do you care about in a different way? Oh, so many things. No, well, you're when saying I was like younger, I just little. wasn't taking things seriously. Yeah, there's it's a you different I mean? a different way of caring about things because yeah. you're not there yet. I'm like, I'm 17. Ah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I don't care about you. You know what I mean? But so if your dad like, got sick and you're 17, you still care. He just did. in a different way. Yeah. Or if yeah. your brother, you know. For sure. For sure. Friend. It's just different caring because you're at a different emotional and, and mature level. Yeah. Maturity. You know you're not going to end up with that person at 17. And you're not worried about it. You're just kind of living. And then, like, However. as you get older and you have and you have gone through that, like, the, mm -hmm. the difficult parts and you know the things that you need to look out for, they're, like, the longer term things. But those feelings, though, the same feelings that you had, those first feelings when you felt love or you thought you felt love. That intensity, I think that's still the same. It still is so good. Like it's the same rush that you get. You? Oh, I zoned out for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> well, shoot. It's just your show. Don't worry about it, Jared. Yeah, don't don't worry we'll about take your it running. over. No, it was. I forget what the fuck I was just thinking about, man. I was just like gone for it like two Scientology days. Scientology, or you know, it's been a long couple of days. But um, no. Yeah. Yeah, it's been exciting. And you, you've had it a long couple days as I well. I have. I have. Um, so how was the EDC? It was, it was really nice. I had a great time. Uh, one of our friends DJed, and he was amazing. 
Um, and I saw some really cool culture. I've not really like ever learned about that culture before, but it was like, it was the thing is, it's like, Jared, it was better have, when there was ecstasy involved with that. Culture. I didn't have anything like that. I definitely didn't. That's, it wasn't like near that cool. But like, the thing is, is like there were fireworks. It was just like millions and millions of dollars worth. It was just the most incredible thing to witness. Everything was like yeah. stimulus everywhere. I, I saw that and EDC definitely used to, did what didn't used to be like that. So it's crazy because EDC used to be in LA. And yeah, it was it was a huge huge thing and it was cool like I went one so I, I didn't have a lot of fun um I've never like I've, I've I'm like like rave repellent like every time I go to a rave I'm like this sucks and there's all these like kids running around ah yeah. and I'll fucking like well, I was in Vegas and I have some really good friends there and then we went to Dre's as well we had uh Travis Scott played Wale was there and so was mm. um Waka Flocka so you know being from the south that was a big deal because I love Waka Flocka he's been from Atlanta so it was one of those things where it's like we had a really good time still we turned up in another way too we had a really what good what was time. that Muppet that used to say Waka 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 Waka, waka, waka. yeah <laughs> it was the it was the bear one right yeah what's his name I don't know and my dad the, used uh, to say that to me and my sister all the time when we used to go do cheerleading we would go to like jump and we'd yeah. start saying that we'd start laughing and we wouldn't be able to do it yeah and see cartoons just left like a stain in my soul so i can't i i hear name a name like waka and i'm like ah, 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 ah. he probably got it from there too though i can't but remember what his name was though i've always hated the childish things so like raves are just like one step up from kindergarten for me Wait, so you, didn't, just you like, didn't like furry boots you don't like glow sticks like candy necklaces it not was, your thing but you know what it's one of those things where it's like you may hate it but you don't know until you go that you hate it do you know yeah. what i mean and no, i've never been i, I always thought before, i was like so oh this amazing. is gonna be cool and then if Five or six times later, I'm just like, I, yeah, I've not been well, to one I, of Yeah, those. exactly. If you've done it, you've done it. But, like, if you go there in the middle of the night and you see, like, all these carnival rides and the, all this fire happen, they're like, so there's, like, a parade with floats with fire on it. I mean, like, it was insane. Like, it was just stimulus everywhere. It was just, yeah. it was, like, I, the future. I think that's what bothers me about it is because when it comes to that kind of stimulus, like, people are just like, this is so cool, and they just get so into it, and it's just cool, and everything's, well, whoa. Drugs, and bro, I'm like, so. no, but even if, they're, if they <laughs> are or aren't, like, like that's the kind it's like i just see this whole thing and i'm like i just see this like pied piper of edm music just yeah, just totally like trancing sure. these kids along and i'm like i'm like like it's, i can't i can't partake in being a fucking mindless like beat slave like like for me it's like such a fucking like I, i'm like no no i won't i will not go over there and fucking you know shake it with all these people See, and that's just like that's what makes me sad out. though is like i always feel like i never say no to opportunities on things like that like yeah. you, just like you're good just like your ex said don't don't say no to things because you may go and no, you may I, be I, like wow i I've had a totally want, different experience yeah. you know what i mean like with the new way like with the way it's done and it, it depends on who you go with sometimes too and what you're doing there I've, and i, I trust so me I i've like, double blinded the shit out of this i've done it i've i've went to raves with people i loved people i didn't know i went to raves sober i went to raves and done every crazy kind of thing that you could do to induce Maybe you know hallucinant it just <laughs> i just i am i and and i know that i'm the one that's weird because it's like everyone else loves you that heard it shit. here first ladies and gentlemen but it's just for me it's like people start and and it, i'm saying it with my friends like like so many of my friends are into music and they bring it up and they're like yeah. I'm, I'm like what do you do and they're like oh i'm in music and i'm like oh. like fucking another one jesus <clears throat> christ like <laughs> Like, I just can't, like, the music culture out here is so prevalent, and it's just like, yeah. Ah. I love music, though. Music makes me so happy, and all, all types of music make me happy. Um, I mean, like, and, and I like I, I like people who are in music. My dad was a musician, so for me, it's like, I think that's why I connect so mm. heavily to music, and because my dad's gone. So it's like, I always have this, like, I, if you go yeah. and you press play, and you hit, like, you know, like, the skip around, like, you would hear Leonard Skinner, you would hear, like, uh, Ellie Golding, you would hear DJ Snake, you would hear, you know, country. It would just, it would just be all this like this huge conglomerate yeah. of music. And I do like Leonard Skinner and Ellie Golding and stuff. Like I, I don't completely hate music, but I just, I find it so, um, you know, it just, I, I, and I, yeah, I was gonna, I, I thought about Ty Lopez for a second there. I was like, I'm gonna pull Ty Lopez and be like, you know what I like? I like knowledge. Because if my, because basically, I when think it, it has fifty six bedrooms and <laughs> maybe eighteen bathrooms and. But not sure yet. Not sure. Not sure. Um, yeah. Depends on what you use them for. But when it comes down to it, like I, I, I really like, um, like learning, and that's what I'm kind of addicted to. So if I've got music coming in, I'm feeling I'm not learning. Um, if I and if I'm listening to music actively or consciously, I could be listening to something that would would elevate my consciousness. It's actually, very interesting some, what you just said. Some way. That so you like separate audio from feeling. Yeah. It's very interesting. Yeah. But I'm either thinking or I'm feeling, but not probably two. In, well, yeah, two in the same, but then I, that's depends inspirational books. I guess it depends. Like, like, and I'm, I wonder if what people get from music, 
like the kind of like <gasps> elevated uplifting stuff that's no, what i, I get when i listen to like, like Les Brown. i think it's i think it's emotion for me it's like music can tell a story of something that you feel and you connect with the artist because you're going through the same thing and it can be a connection that you feel like this thread that you feel like you have with like 400 other people who are standing right next to you too and it's crazy because it's like yeah. life and it, it really draws you in and you're like wow everyone in this same crowd because i remember there's um alice in wonderland was playing and she's a dj and she was like this is for anyone who's ever been cheated on and everyone in that in that moment kind of went to that spot you know what i mean and they all kind of had this moment and it was like everyone could relate to that and this one person was standing up there and touching that many people at one time and it yeah. was incredible to witness i guess you know yeah I mean? relatability so but it's like the artist for me it's like the artistry and knowing because my dad that's how my dad explained to me how he felt when he played drums on stage so it's like i started to look at artists that way so mm -hmm. i think that until you really are like it's put in that light for you it's kind of like you're like oh now i can now i can see maybe where you're at yeah. you know what I and mean? i think a lot of people hold on to and still have a lot of issues and they don't get over stuff like that or they're like oh i've been cheated on you know fuck that motherfucker so there's a song musicians that connects still do it but for me i'm too. over here like like i i'm self-development all day long so i just i'm uh, shit happens i'm like oh, gotta but fix people that self-develop you know like sometimes through music and they grow that way like if you go through something and an artist is saying something he's speaking to you or she's speaking mm. to you and it's helping you get cathartically through that you know what i mean like you can listen Definitely. to a song on replay a hundred times times and feel better and then be like you know like kelly clarkson you could probably kelly clarkson and out through a divorce and be just fine you know what i mean and that's and that's that's, that's a yeah. beautiful thing that an artist can be that yeah famous. it does make you feel better and i mean maybe that's because i'm a robot like oh, I, it depends on your own experiences yeah. i mean how do screenwriters watch movies they watch movies way differently or editors yeah. than right. normal people right. so that's how do true. musicians listen to music sometimes they're li they're listening totally for a specific well, I went to, specific tone. yeah i went musicians to musicians are always way sexier to me so sexy yeah, I don't, I don't understand. Of course, women are be no, women are grounded in emotion, so it makes perfect sense why that why women love musicians. That's but true. I've never, I've never understood like, like for a long time, I was like, what the fuck, like, like literally like why because he's dirty he's got no, attitude because, like i don't get it no because and as a female because musician i don't have that him play, so it's something sexy that. it's like the, first of all there's there's an instrument and it's like a female when you think about it and they're playing it and they're playing it proficiently and they're doing really well and they're delicate with it and it's their craft and you're like oh my god yeah but most girls like the lead singer that. so i mean i don't yeah. no, I, like the I would rather I like have the guitarist, the, guitarist, the, the guitarist or the drummer because the precision in the hand movements you already know they know how to how to use their body not so much that they they definitely have more emotion for me Except for Eddie Vedder. Eddie Vedder, and so is Dave Matthews, a very emotional singer. But for me... I'm more physical. But for I'm me, it's like, it's it's the fact that they're, they're the, it's, it, they always get more into it. Like, you know what I mean? Like, when you watch a drummer play, like, he's by himself, and he's just, he's having a good time. He's having a blast. He doesn't care about anything. You know what I mean? Like, in a guitar, like yeah. a guitarist, everyone's watching that guy, you know what I mean, on stage, because he's the most moving around, and he's always into it. Like, Slash, you know what I mean? Like, when you watch someone like that play, you're like, wow, this isn't emotional. Like, it's it's just, it's it's this whole experience that's different. And, like, the singer, for me, it's like, I think that's the obvious go-to, but I think the more talent, the guy who stands out the most to me is the most talent, like, you know, who can play the, the hardest and I think that that's so and it's guitarist. interesting because we could break that down and we could say well maybe that's because those, you, you like those because those are the two instruments your dad plays so there's this daddy nah. thing there and the most intellectual. Uh, or or you could have conditioned yourself to believe that they're the most intellectual because everyone goes for the first one so you're going to go for the second one because you feel like you're going to be counterintuitive which is, it's just, these are just funny things that, uh, and that's, this is I why like, I don't relate to people because I fucking, I just I sit here like and think about shit all day. I feel like they always end up writing songs too and they end, up, they end up being like the most passionate. Like after spending time around a bunch of bands, I found that like, I'd say seven times out of ten that they're definitely the most that I connect just most all with about them. The I just, I, I think that they're, they're less full of themselves too. You know what I mean? Like they know that they're expendable. So they're really humble and they're really nice guys. And they're usually really just tatted out and just gorgeous. And you're like, no, what are you doing? Guitarist? I love you. It's, it's just, I mean, they're always, they're always the one that draws me in. I know she probably, how do you, I mean, do you not feel the same way? I am so not attracted to musicians. I mean, I, I am what? one, so Oh, that's probably that's why. Opposite. I have to be the opposite. I'm yeah, more attracted sense. to the people that manage them or, you know, that type of thing. Not, yeah, not like someone that's on artist. the stage. Yeah. Well, anyways, this has been an interesting show. Um, that's what we do. All I, of your I, shows I, are interesting, It's what we Jared. do here there, at Modern Mail. There was something that I was going to, that I, I wanted to come back to, but we're out of time. So um, Probably Scientology. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. No, it definitely d had, didn't have to do with Scientology. It was probably yeah. like in regards to dating because I just, yeah, there was something. Because that's something. what we talk about here at Modern Mail. <laughs> Not always, but clearly, <laughs> you know, what? it always comes full circle. And, and, you know, yeah. even somebody watching this, you could be like, oh, well, you know, how and just watching like 
90 uh, percent of the women that i know or that i've interacted with have said that the conversational quality if it if it's not really relevant and if it's not interesting and engaging that that's something that yeah that's 100%. A huge, huge like thing. if you can't talk to me and you can't communicate to me i literally don't care and will not try to pull it out of you i will walk away from you so fast don't and care. by the way i mean we feel the same way uh and that's For why sure. yeah there are a lot of well, yeah that's that's it, not that tends not to be a problem on the re, on the reverse side actually like, like you, where it's you're like, saying we have a problem with talking i'm saying that a lot of women have a problem with actually coming up y'all heard that lady speak up they said <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> or don't yeah. just be glued to the textual relationship yeah because we're so textually attracted to each other and then when we hit real life yes. y'all should snapchat works. each other then all right well uh that's it for night um and you can find her at sarah beth harris yes, you can, can find her at leo pelka and you can find me at Modern Mail Inc. across the board uh, on Facebook, uh, the Modern Mail Movement, I believe. All right, that's it for night, folks. Thanks for tuning in to Modern Mail Radio. Speechless, speechless. You're listening to Modern Mail Radio with Jared Zavistosky, right here on LA Talk Radio.